Fast and Furious. Number four. Fast and Furious. Four Fast, Four Furious. Four, f- four Faster, Four Furious, sir, is um, not the worst. Like, I still think two is my least favorite. Okay, actually, really quick. Yeah. Something I want to do. I, I, want, I know we talked about this last time about how for like it was a, a big thing in the 2000s where sequel uh, you know the 2000s. sequence movies had oh, yeah. the 3d the, the number in the title All what would stuff. you have called if you were following that trend as in number two was too fast too furious what <laughs> yeah. would you have called number three number three to make it make sense so so not tokyo drift just not tokyo drift all right um I, man I, I, i'm terrible on the spot with this did you do you have something already thought up I don't. <laughs> I, I was just, I was just thinking of this one. If it's not gonna be three fast, three furious, no, you, four fast, four furious, yeah, you it can't could be like be, two fast for you. I mean, three w- the four in it. <laughs> that that would be a good one. That, that's actually that's my favorite one I've ever heard. Uh, it would. Right. I think number three would have to be three D, right? I mean, it's kind of they kind of missed no, that it, opportunity. Yeah, it definitely would. Fast just and be furious three D. Fast and furious three D. Um, I, the only problem with too fast for you is the two, I think it throws you off. Uh, yeah. So I guess that would be a good one for the 24th one. Where there's two and four <laughs> there in you it. Go. We all know they're going there. <laughs> we, they, they still have a chance to use that then too fast for you, but the two and the four are just stacked on top of each other. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Uh, okay. So maybe this one is. Uh, well, no, oh. you just turn the F's into fours, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just four fast, four furious. Four fast, four furious. Um, so this one is about Paul Walker is back in the FBI after. So he was he was a police officer in the first one. Oh. He was an outlaw in the second His one. His career path <laughs> is ridiculous. Working with the Miami. So he was an LAPD Working with the Miami, uh, Miami, Miami, That's how you say it. U.S. Customs, not even the police yeah. department. He's working for the right. customs, the customs agents, not existent in then the he, third. Then he's a criminal, and then he all of a sudden he is now qualified to be an FBI agent. Now he's in the FBI. Originally, let's also keep in mind he was not good at being a cop. No. He was not good at being any kind of law enforcement. And then he let a criminal go. He let a criminal go and he stole a bunch of money with Tyrese at the end of the second one. That's Remember? right. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't hungry no more. Oh, God. I'm so glad they wrapped that up. <laughs> like, hey, but, remember how this ties <clears throat> to what he said earlier? It's so stupid. But now he's back what in is- California, right? With the FBI? Uh, I believe it's Los Angeles, right? I thought so. I, I think so. But Dom... Vin Diesel's character is in the Dominican Republic stealing uh, huge gas uh, tanks. Okay, wait, 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 wait. That's the opening. Did Vin Diesel go all the way to Tokyo just to race that dude because he also knew okay. Han? You realize, that... wait, do you realize that Han is in this movie? Yes. Okay, so, the so t- this one obviously takes place before. Before. And this was a big I, I get issue. That for a lot of people when these movies were coming out because they're like when does tokyo drift take place because we don't find out for a while okay i'm fine to never find out but (laughs) you're gonna find out so in this movie though we see han so they're like hey look we weren't joking there's han on his crew it's so stupid they just you warned him in the reason is the director justin lynn puts him in every single movie he does they're like good friends but it's like you can't kill them and then put them back in the series just had they not done that it would have like everything would have fit together so much better just don't put on oh yeah well now it's a prequel and part of the reason was the line when han says i hear they're doing some pretty wild stuff in tokyo oh i hated that i hated that (laughs) wow (laughs) But they they're stealing the tankards or the what do you call those the the giant yeah the the tankers the the gas the the, the tanker is it a tanker it's a tanker is that right 
so say so. They said but no. Hold Max, on, hold on, hold on. Hang you on, haven't hang answered on. my question. Wow, come on. It's probably a bad question. Okay, here's here's look. If if it's something that gets revealed in a later movie, that's fine. Okay. But if not, I want to know. Did Vin Diesel go to Tokyo because he found out that his friend Han is dead, so he felt like he needed to raise someone else who also knew Han? Was that why he went to Tokyo? Partly. Or is there an actual reason? Partly. It's, it's, okay, fine. I, fine. Oh, I, can't, wait. I can't give you more than that. Otherwise, it'll start giving stuff away. Oh, man. I hate to be spoiled. <laughs> it's important. It's shocking. Oh, okay i'm telling you it's uh it's a big deal and it happens um oh boy <laughs> um so but they're so, still in oil right? yeah they're still in gasoline uh, hang on max i don't know if you're still in here if you are this opening scene they said they got the inspiration from the way they drive trucks in australia because in america we would never have a semi pulling six containers of gasoline like yeah, this that was ridiculous <laughs> but they said they got it because they do it in australia so i don't know if that's true or not i assume it probably or it could be because australia is pretty flat i believe we're in okay like, that's all fine but it's not like they were in australia no well, they're in the, what does that have to do with anything yeah they load up the trailers that's crazy that's got to be a nightmare if they crash taylor Wait, tell the story Max, are you in australia what time is it in Australia, it's probably like four o'clock, maybe not six, but there's some massive ones. Uh, yeah, it's probably like four or five, I'm guessing, because it's 2 p.m. here in Thailand. Um, Taylor, tell the story about the time you guys were in your van and the trailer started. Oh, when we were trying to steal the tankers? Yeah, when you're trying to steal the tankers, 4.40 p.m. in Australia. Wait, so he is in Australia. So you are in Australia? Yeah, that's why I asked him. Okay, I would like to know what that has to do with this movie. Like, just because they do it in Australia, I'm going to do they got... it in this movie that doesn't take place in Australia. <laughs> well, that's where they got the inspiration from. Okay, but do they do that in the Dominican? I doubt it. I don't think so. So, what? so why not make the heist in Australia then? That's it. They should have, I guess. I, I don't know. That's just, uh, that's, it's, that's so dumb. Can you tell that story or not? Okay, which story is this? In the trailer, the trailer when you guys are towing, ugh, when you're towing oh, the trailer, my vacation. yeah. Okay, so my father retired, and my parents decided, let's get a 15 passenger van and a 32 foot trailer for us all to cram in to live in. Yeah, because that's well, just, eight of you. No, there was like 12 of us at the time. 12. Okay, it varied. I don't honestly. I'm not <laughs> sure how many were there at that time mm -hmm. i think there was probably 10 of us and so we had this trailer for a little while is i don't know but we were going on vacation we were uh going to eventually go to wyoming and colorado we live in california and we're towing this bad boy and we we get to a to a city where it's very windy outside well it's and flat right you guys are going through vegas or nevada it, we're, so we're going through Riverside, which is it's it's on the way. Okay, but it's still California. It's it's a little further than like Los Angeles, yeah. distance wise. And so it, it's super windy, and uh, so our trailer starts fishtailing. Yeah, and that, that it's common, right? Because it's just a big old trailer. It happens, but like it starts getting like bigger and bigger until finally this thing completely whips around. <laughs> <laughs> while still hooked to our van flips the entire van and the trailer upside down f gliding us upside down six lanes of freeway <laughs> somehow we didn't hit any other vehicles i don't know how because it was like five o'clock it was definitely like rush hour yeah well you know during the middle of the week so and then his whole family died <laughs> <laughs> and i i'm i i don't know why you're making me talk about this <laughs> There were so many, no, no one died. <laughs> to be honest, it's crazy how little there was. Pretty much no injuries other than some cuts. Yeah. So well, I think so I think your dad got hurt the most when uh, Dante so, unbuckled yeah. him, right? 
No, so it was it was Isaac, right? So Isaac oh, goes Isaac. around the front. My dad is sitting in the pass front passenger seat. We're upside down, and it's it's crazy. You really don't realize that you're upside down. Yeah, it's it, it, you don't get that head rush. You don't. I didn't realize I was upside down until I undid my seatbelt, and you literally just <laughs> fall to the to the roof. It's crazy. So. I got stuck in my, I had to be cut out of my car seat by some. <laughs> Wait, like a baby car seat? Were you in a. Out uh, of my seatbelt. <laughs> it, it had wrapped around me. Uh, and I, I, I was legit stuck. I couldn't be, they had to cut me out. And so one of my brothers, Isaac, had gone around to the front where my dad was to see how he was doing and just reached in and unbuckled my dad. <laughs> My dad didn't realize he was upside down <laughs> until my brother unbuckled him and boom, he falls probably a good foot, foot and a half to the roof and smashes his head. And that oh, was probably man. the most prominent injury. Yeah. But anyways, there were so many of us that we had to take three different ambulances to three different hospitals. We got sent like well, they all probably, over the city. I mean, y'all look different. So they're like, oh, well, clearly let's just group the colors together. And then send them to different yeah, hospitals. That's exactly what that, well, that's <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Is it? <laughs> it was no, it wasn't like that. Oh. We just happened to be kind of in this gray area of county lines. Yeah. No one really knew. Oh, whose so it was restriction a, it was. Yeah, it was just the individual ambulances taking you. So it wasn't like Gosh, a coordinated. Yeah, gotcha. That makes sense. I don't believe so. But anyways, but yeah, we ended up. Sorry, we ended up going to four different hospitals. Uh, it was, it was this whole adventure, but <laughs> that was, uh, that was our vacation for that summer. So now imagine so you have an additional five trailers, <laughs> five, five <laughs> trailers. Yeah. Makes total sense. Also, I don't care that, that dude was hauling it for the kind of road he was on. Yeah. That big turn that was coming up. Which I'm sure it's not the first time he's been on this road. He is reckless. <laughs> well, uh, another thing about that. So, th do you did you notice he had that iguana? He not had, until he jumped out. Okay, when he jumped out, he he gave the iguana a bite of a carrot or candy bar or something like that earlier in the film. And okay, when, I didn't even see that. When I was listening to the I commentary. They tried to get him to. They tried to get the iguana to take a bite of the candy bar. The iguana wouldn't do it, so they brought him back two weeks later, after starving the iguana for two weeks, just oh, to get him to wow. bite the candy bar. Still didn't what? bite the candy bar, so they had so to. They killed him. <laughs> they had to do it with like CGI or something. But I was like, how unnecessary? Who cares if the iguana takes a bite of the candy bar? Like, just have the guy show him the candy bar and then not bite it. And he's like, oh, whatever. And that's it. Because this is this is a common <coughs> thing that we've been seeing where you take a scene that you thought of in your head and then you write a movie around it. Yeah. And he says, I have to get this. This is the cornerstone of my movie. It all falls apart if I don't get this stupid iguana to eat this carrot. Yeah. Max said that's weird. And it was which it's, it's crazy. It's funny that they went through all that and I did not even notice it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but overall, the heist of the actual uh, gas tankards, that, that, that just doesn't feel right. I feel like it's... it's I feel word. like it would have been so much easier to just force the guy to pull over and then steal the whole thing. Just steal the, the semi, the whole semi? You're probably yeah. right. Why on earth? They... Uh, well, so what that... So stupid. <laughs> what it was, was like an homage to train robberies, which I thought was actually a pretty cool way to do it. Right? Like... Nope. You imagine the semi with all the gas trucks or is a train and then they're all on horses and now you have like a western train robbery scene. Which is uh, which is cool. Like No, then if that were true because guess what? What's that? Horses can't pull trains? Did your computer die again? Taylor. Tell me you didn't kill your computer again. This guy Well, I guess it's a solo podcast again. Let me see if he sent me a message. Maybe the fault line in California went off and he just fell back into the ocean. 
All right. Uh, I don't know where he is, but I do. I think that that opening scene. Hello. Oh, you're back. Guess who's back? <laughs> Didn't expect that. Uh, what happened? Uh, my mic came unplugged. I am reckless. <laughs> I I think. No. I think okay. I think that opening scene is cool. I think the homage to westerns is cool. No, it's dumb because guess what? The, <clears throat> the time the, 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 the train robbers don't dismantle the train cars. They just get on the train and they take it over, and then they rob everyone and then they leave. So he, get aboard. You can do the same concept. Yeah. Board the thing and ditch the dude in the truck. Or steal was, steal the contents without so stealing the the tanks, maybe more complicated than it had to be and yeah. way more dangerous than it had to be yeah they, they almost died they, they almost died a lot on this <laughs> they should have died yeah so they still uh all the tankards and well almost all of them tankards. what I is think it a tankard is like a, a mug that you is drink that a, mead a, from <laughs> well that's what i've been saying this whole time you told me i was right earlier no, and i said tanker. that doesn't sound right tanker Tank er yeah tanker a tanker it still doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit well. You call it like a vessel. Uh, no. A tank. It's, there's, it's I, think, I feel like there's thing. a legit name. The only thing it's not is a tankard. <laughs> That's the only thing it's not? That doesn't seem fair. There's a lot of things it's not. I don't know. Anyways, Vin Diesel, what did you think about the scene where he slides underneath? Like he times it. He sees the thing bouncing because the, oh, the, truck, highly crash. problematic. <laughs> the tr- truck crashes after the guy jumps out. He sees it bouncing and times it and drives underneath it, slides underneath it. I thought that was so, so dumb. dumb. Yeah. I you thought know, that was a you terrible. Know what I thought I thought about it and what it would have been even funnier is if he's sitting there timing it, timing it, timing it, and then like he takes off and forgets that his freaking car does the big old willy. <laughs> and just clips and it. And it just completely wrecks it. <laughs> well, this wasn't the willy car. This was like a Buick or something like that. Yeah, that's why it wasn't funny. I, it was, just, it was the, just dumb instead. The thing I, I really do appreciate about this series is all the cars are really nice. And they're not like, you know, whatever year this was, like 2013. They weren't like the newest model. They're using like old school cars and making them look like updated and new and nice. Mm, nice is a stretch. <laughs> I don't know. Which ones aren't nice? They're all nice. Uh, I don't know. I don't really care for them. <laughs> but I, I enjoy all the practical car effects, but this one where he drives underneath the tank or tankard. I feel like tankard is still what I want to say. When he drives underneath it, it wasn't that exciting because you know he's not going to get smushed by it or get blown up. Wouldn't that be up great? And then like... <laughs> just that's, that's the just end. It? That would be pretty good. Um, Then we cut over to Brian. Paul Walker is back in the series now, and he's in a race or a chase, but on foot, which seems weird. Yeah, so uh, I I found it really hard to follow anything that he was doing. Yeah. Max says, that's the point of these movies. They're supposed to be dumb and impossible stunts. I think people like to see them and shake their head during every movie. Sort of like Sharknado, I guess. I think it's... See, that's my argument. I, I feel like they are that dumb, but I don't feel like they intend for them to be that dumb. They, they think that they're cool. I think... I disagree with both of you. I think they're closer to Mission Impossible. I think when they're, when they're done well, or the best Fast and Furious are stunt... Or showcases of stunts, which is what Mission Impossible is. Mission Impossible is like a spy thing. Fast and Furious is this car superhero franchise but it's the stunts that they do that's the impressive part that's the fun part the rest of the stuff is like the storylines and all that like i think sharknado is a decent comparison but sharknado is like supposed to be dumb almost like a parody of life movies i don't know but i think fast and the furious is closer to mission impossible than maybe sharknado yeah, no, that's probably true. But yeah, uh, so Brian is chasing after this guy, and I I like this chasing. I thought it was cool. Um, I don't remember much other than he jumps out the window after him. Yeah, no, that was a cool scene. I thought 
I thought that was a cool way to end it. Except they would both be really hurt slamming on a car. Really, yeah. <clears throat> cut up. Max says Tom Cruise is climbing buildings. He ain't jumping a car from building to building. He burn. <laughs> he he. Boom. Tom Cruise actually flew the helicopter in the latest one, and when he fell, that was actually him from falling from the helicopter onto that thing. I mean, it was all set up safely, but uh, Tom Cruise is a crazy person, and I feel like Scientology has a big part to play with that. Oh, absolutely. Look at John Travolta. He's also a crazy person in a slightly different way, but still very crazy. Yeah, but not as fun. John Travolta's like creepy crazy. Tom Cruise is like Oh, you don't think John Travolta's crazy as fun? Like when he what's what's the, the lady who sings that song from Frozen? Adina Menzel. <laughs> Adina Menzel, right? <laughs> he <laughs> Adele Dazim. <laughs> that yeah, was the uh, greatest moment in television history. John Travolta, well, he had that whole controversy about trying to get people on his private airplane to give him special massages. Oh, no, he's creepy, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, and he's a terrible actor. Tom Cruise is fun. I and mean, he's definitely crazy, but he's fun. Did you, did you unplug your mic again? How are you moving around so much that you keep unplugging your mic? This doesn't make any sense to me. Are you upside down? Are you on like a, one of those inversion tables? How have you not plugged your mic back in already? Oh, oh no. He's probably actually gone. Crashed again. All right, Max. So this is actually a few weeks after what we were just talking about. Our setup fell. Taylor's computer died, I believe. I don't know what... It was it was something to do with Skype. Oh, was it Skype? I thought your computer died completely. The first, like, it started cutting out, and then your computer died. Well, yeah, it it, it kept <clears throat> it it just shut off completely, and then I'd have to reboot it. Yeah. And then every time I tried to open Skype, it was doing the same thing. So I fi- I, I finally I just uninstalled it and reinstalled it, and I haven't had any issues. So yeah, hopefully that was that was it. But we were talking about Fast and the Furious Four or Fast and Furious, and there's a lot of crazy things in this movie, but I don't think we really need to get into it more than... At this point, did. though... Hang on, no, sorry. I- I'm getting a phone call. <clears throat> All right, sorry. I got a phone call. Had to take a second. Um, But yeah, what we were saying was Fast and Furious, it's been a few weeks since I think we've seen it, and there's not a ton to this one that's really that vital to the story. Um, no, the only thing. Okay, hold on. So this is, here's a problem, and I knew this was going to happen. Is you're going to get them all confused? They're all going to run together. For yeah. Me. So, so spoiler, just briefly spoiler, remind me which one is for. A look behind the curtain. We've watched five and six in preparation to record the next podcast to try to uh, keep up with our schedule. But so we've. We want to tie up for number four, but number four, what happened was Letty is working with Brian and she, this one with Braga. Yeah. With Braga. She gets murdered and Brian is trying to catch Braga. Uh, Vin Diesel is trying to uh, get revenge for Letty. And this brings in son or not son. Uh, What's his name in this? That's his actual name. Oh, uh, uh, Han. Han. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it brings in Han back from Tokyo Drift. It brings just in. Just for like a minute, though, right? He's only in that first scene. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. He's only in it for a bit. Does he come back he in the end? Not, I don't think so. Not in this one. Um, but it brings in Gal Gadot. Gadot? Gal Gadot. I, I don't know why I said Gadot. I knew it wasn't Gadot. Um, <laughs> Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Uh, brings her in, which I, I was like, I knew her character. I kind of had a vague memory of her character, but I like never realized that she was in this. And it, she stood out to me after seeing Wonder Woman. So it was kind of weird to see her yeah, play this character. Um, but so 
it brought back Vin Diesel, brought back Brian. Brian's working for the FBI, Vin Diesel, and they're trying to get, they're trying to Welcome. figure out Letty's story. And uh, right. there's, you know, there's the action is okay in this one. It's the most tame of the newer ones. And we start to see the departure from uh, street racing in this one. There's a couple scenes where I think they win a car at one point, but they almost, I don't think they actually show the race. Like I, I listened to the director commentaries on this and uh, I've done it for the last, I actually, I've done it for all the Fast and Furious movies, but uh, Justin Lin has directed three, four, five, and six. Yeah. Three, mm. four, five, and six. And uh, he very clearly doesn't want to make a racing movie, which is fine. Cause I, I think had all of these movies been strictly street racing, it would have been extremely boring. Like well, it, all these movies follow the same formula mm. and it is, it starts out with some sort of heist in vehicles. Mm. Some, some ridiculous over the top, like unrealistic plan. And then the middle is they have to do something for a bad guy, which involves them needing to be very fast in their cars. Yeah. So it's typically some kind of like a race or a first person to do this or whatever. And then it ends with another heist on a bigger scale. Yeah. And even more ridiculous action scenes that make not a lot of sense to me. The end. <laughs> um. Yeah, and so they are. How does this one end? They're working with the FBI, and their goal is to get Vin Diesel's character Dom, uh, yes. immunity for everything that he had done in the past. They're working together. Uh, they which they. I'm sorry, he hasn't done enough for the FBI to warrant getting immunity, anyways. Well, what did he in do? My his he needed immunity just for the first movie, right? At this point, um, for stealing the DVDs and uh, for running. <sighs> that's all. That's all he's done up until this point. And I think he's got the assault. The, but with he's the already, wrench or he, whatever. He'd already gone through prison for that. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. If, so the only thing that would do is like uh, multiply the sentencing for. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, it's like, oh, yeah. you have a, a, a previous record. We're going to even, it's going to be even more harsh, oh, sure. but it's not, it's not like a new sentence for that. Um, right. Okay. So he, he helps them. They catch Braga. They kill the guy who killed Letty. Um, and it's all like done through this tunnel chase, which I didn't like. I didn't think that was very fun. Uh, nope. It was dumb. It was. I hated I hated how he slams at, at the end. He slams into the side of that dude's car. Yeah. And the, they like force their way like through the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and not only oh, that, that, it wasn't that's fine. It wasn't through the mountain. It was through the, like the plywood cover. Like it was a, uh, in the exit. I thought they straight went through <clears throat> rock. No, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because then, it's not on like top of that. They I'm, are flying through the air. I'm like, mm. the, the, I said, if you were going so fast that that was possible, you would have just disintegrated this car. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't rock, but it was pretty bad. Um, okay. I thought he straight busted a new <laughs> hole through this mountain, <laughs> which let's be honest. It's not like, it's not unbelievable. Yeah. No, fast and furious. no, you're, you're fair in thinking that's what happened, but I, I'm pretty sure that's not. Um, okay. That makes more sense. They it's still stupid though, but he does do another Willie, which ends up being his kind of his calling card almost like every movie he's going to do a willy i guess i i didn't remember that i remembered the first one which i don't have a problem with in the first movie when he does a willy in the charger because that's something yeah. that actually happens to cars like you have to have like in drag racing they put the willy bar or the i don't know what it's called i want to say it's a willy bar but the thing on the back so you don't just completely flip over because if you have a real rear wheel drive car with so much torque it can just flip your car on its head you know on it onto yeah. the roof 
Um, so him doing a wheelie in the first one was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Him doing a wheelie in this one at will to protect himself from bullets was like at wheelie <laughs> at wheelie. It was like, okay, this is getting a bit much. Um, but whatever. He ends up killing the guy, saves Brian. They, you know, they get their revenge. Um, and Braga goes to jail. Braga goes to jail, but then he goes to court. Vin Diesel goes to court, and they they say, you know what? No, you're not getting any immunity. You're not getting any leniency. You clearly have an issue breaking the law. You don't seem like you've gotten better. You're going to prison. Movie ends with uh, Brian, Mia, which is Dom's sister, Han, yeah. uh, the two Mexican guys. Was Gal Gadot? Approaching. She What's wasn't. That? Gal Gadot wasn't with that crew, right? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but they, they, the movie approaching ends with them. Approaching the prison bus. Approaching the prison bus. Which I thought was a good ending. I thought that was a pretty solid way to end the movie. Uh, yeah. F- okay, for this movie, mm-hmm. it was fine. Yeah. Okay. I. <laughs> yeah. It's so dumb. I want to talk about though. Uh, okay. Like we said, we we see Han at the beginning of this movie. Yes. They pull off their heist, right? Mm. This is the one with the tanker. The tanker. And then, yeah, yeah. We, and once you're talking about that, what was the last do, thing we talked about before your computer yeah, shut down. We were tankers. yelling at each other about tankers. They're basically asking each other like what they're gonna do, and then Han says, "Oh, well, I hear they're doing some crazy stuff in Tokyo." Yeah. Which, which is like okay. Now we've tied it together with Tokyo Drift. Now we know why he's in Tokyo. Yeah. But then he doesn't go for like another year. Yeah. It takes him a long time to get there. He's like you said, because he's back there at the end. Mm -hmm. So the uh, listening that that was like the lead in like that should have been the last time we saw him. the coming back. So I like these movies coming into doing this with you. I like Mm -hmm. enjoyed them. I liked my memory of them watching the movies again. They weren't so bad. But watching the director's commentary on them has ruined them for me because Justin Lin seems like the worst, uh, at least for my style of movies that I like to enjoy. I don't mind. I don't mind taking like thinking like, oh, I just I, I, I don't need to worry about the details. I'll just enjoy this movie. Like, that's how I was about this. That's how I'm about like Mission Impossible. That's how I am about Saw. It's like, I'm not going to worry about the details. I'm just going to enjoy what they're doing. Um, but then when I hear Justin Lin being like, yeah, people were like, why is this happening? This doesn't make sense. And he's like, ah, don't worry about it. We just, the audience is better off if they don't question it. They'll just enjoy it more. And it's like, whoa, whoa. it's your job to make this understandable. <laughs> yeah. Your job is to, to take these moments that you want to do and make them make sense. Make them natural. Make them logical. Yeah, don't logical. tell me to just not worry about it. Yeah. And so, like, his attitude towards it really bothered me and, like, kind of ruined these movies for me. Huh. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I think that I think that's good for Fast and Furious, the fourth one. Um, I think fourth we can, Fast, Four Furious. We can wrap that up here. We're going to continue our conversation about Fast Five. You want to check that out? Fast. It'll come out next week on the podcast, but it should also already be out over on Patreon if you want to hear that now. For a dollar, you get access to everything two weeks in advance, and you can help us decide who has to get punished. Yeah, yeah.